Hi, this is Ben Stegner with MakeUseOf.com. Today I'm going to walk you through the basics of using MIT's free Scratch program. We'll take a look at what the software offers, how to navigate its basic concepts, and a little bit about the Mario game you can build using the article that we link to in the description below. Now, MIT Scratch is a free software that's designed to help kids learn programming. Now, you don't actually write any code with Scratch. What you do is you fit these blocks, as you can see here, uh, into different pieces, kind of like Legos. Uh, they only fit together in certain ways. And it might sound simple, but there are actually a lot of cool things you can create in Scratch, uh, and there's a lot of blocks you can work with that are more complex than they first seem. So first, let's get through a little tutorial of what Scratch looks like and what you can do with it, and then we'll talk about a couple concepts of the Mario game. So obviously, when you open Scratch, you're not going to have a completed project done like I have here. Uh, you're going to have a basic state over here with the little scratch cat uh, but the ideas are still the same so over here on the left we have the stage uh, this is kind of an always-on live preview of what you're doing in scratch at the moment all of the sprites you have selected are over here. Uh, the background, in this case, just that pale blue color, is over here. And then if you're going to test your game, when you click on this green flag, you can go ahead and move your character and do what you're going to do in your game. So that's kind of your live test area. Underneath that, we have the hub for sprites and backgrounds. Uh, you have a couple different options in Scratch. You can use this option to open a stock background that Scratch provides. There's a lot of colors and just scenes like buildings and barns and things like that. You can also draw your own background if you are so inclined, although of course you could also do that using uh, paint.net or another editor. And you can also upload a file or take a picture with your webcam if that's something you wanted to do. Um, the other option over here is your sprites editor. This is where you can uh, upload your sprites and work with them, just like your backgrounds. Uh, just like those, you can click on this, and Scratch has a lot of sprites built in. Uh, this cat is kind of the default Scratch mascot, but you have a ton of different ones to work with if you don't want to uh, use your own assets or draw something up in Photoshop or something like that. Um, you can upload them here. If we come over here to our three tabs up here, these are the main tabs where Scratch actually lets you get work done. Uh, so the first and probably the most important is our scripts tab. And you can see the 10 different categories that Scratch has here. These are the building blocks, uh, Lego pieces, if you will, that make uh, your Scratch sprites do different things. So most of them start off with an event. Um, every, you can see that these events kind of have this little bump to show you that they start the action. So the most basic one is when the green flag is clicked. That's kind of the start. When I start the game, do a bunch of different things. Um, you can also have user input, like when I press the space key or a different key, um, or when a message is broadcast, if you want to get into that. Um, but everything here is kind of grouped together. They are color-coded, so all the motion blocks are blue, all the sound are this purple color, and so on. Um, you'll also notice that blocks only fit together in certain ways. So in these sensing blocks, for example, you notice that they have this pointed uh, hexagonal shape, and whereas in our control, uh, they have a hole for these pointed hexagons. So if you wanted to do something like if this sprite is touching the mouse pointer, you could fit that right in there. But you couldn't do if say hello because that doesn't fit. So that just gives you an idea of how things snap together and how Scratch's logic works. Um, the costume editor and the backdrop editor, if you have one selected, as I said earlier, are used for editing your sprites. Um, Scratch makes it easy to do so here, but you could use a more powerful editor on your own. And Scratch, of course, supports uh, multiple costumes or frames for your sprites. So here we just have a simple two-frame animation for Mario to run with um, that I'll get into in a moment to look, make it look like he's animated. Uh, and then finally, the sounds. Like everything else, Scratch has some default sounds like crowd cheering and explosions and things like that. You can also upload your own sounds if you find them elsewhere on the web. Um, so that's the basics of using Scratch. Uh, one of the really nice things about the service is that you can go to anybody's uh, Scratch project, and there's a button in the corner that says See Inside. And if you click on that, you'll actually get uh, this view that we're looking at right here. So you can see the, the blocks that they've used uh, to make their project, and you can preview their assets and things like that. So we'll have a link to this project available in the video description. Uh, if you'd like to check this one out, we'd be happy to have you poke around and see what we've done in this project. As far as the specifics for the Mario game, uh, you can check out the full article to read the walkthrough that I've written, but a couple things you might want to note are that 
uh, this ground asset here, um, I've provided a link, a uh, zip file with all of these assets so you don't have to uh, work to extract them yourself like I did. Um, but this ground right here, you're going to need to make sure this stretches to fill the whole screen. Um, and one of the things that I talk about in the article is these borders right here. I actually have them hidden at the moment. And you can see that if I run Mario here on that right side, right here where my mouse is, you kind of get that block weirdness because of the way that the blocks are kind of waiting at the edge of the screen uh, for Mario to to walk on. So when we turn this border on, it hides those edges and makes the screen look a lot nicer. You don't have those coins stacked up at the edge and it doesn't look weird. Um, so that's the reason that we do that. Um, other than that, a couple other quick tricks. Uh, you can right click on anything in your sprite list and click on duplicate to add it um, as another copy, which is really nice for the coins uh, and the clouds because every single one has to be its own um, item. You can't just drag and drop three copies of the same coin up. Um, and one of the other important things up here is the grow and shrink tool. Um, if you use that, it will automatically uh, make the sprites bigger or smaller. Um, if you have multiple costumes like we have for Mario here, um, you can shrink just one costume. If you wanted to say have a Mega Mario, you can make that one bigger. Uh, if you use the tool on a sprite over here, it will actually make every costume bigger so you don't have to do them all individually. That's about it uh, for our Mario game. I go into the code that we've set up uh, in detail in the article as well as where to get these sprites uh, and a couple other things to watch out for as well. So if this sounds like something you'd be interested in, be sure to check out the full article over at Make Use Of for a full overview of Scratch and how to make the Mario game that you see right here. Until next time, this has been with Make Use Of, and be sure to keep it at our YouTube channel for more tips and tricks like this, software giveaways, and more. Take care.